Mallory did kiss me first. I did not. And that was the first night we kissed, and Mallory kissed me first. No, I did she not. She leaned into that. I do, just feel like. <laughs> and do not edit this out of this podcast. Honesty. <laughs> Be honest. <laughs> It's like sometimes like one person will just like lean a little bit first. And That's then... called passion. And she kissed me <laughs> first. She was overcame with passion. <laughs> and. Hey guys, welcome back to the Living Fully podcast. Boy, do I have a treat for you today. Um, some might call this next guest the pool boy. Some might call him a scientist on Instagram. Um, some may call him wildly inappropriate, um, just in his general way of existing on the earth. <laughs> but I, for the past seven years, have called him my husband. So today I would like to welcome Kyle onto the podcast. I'm very happy to be here. We're really happy to have you. Awesome studio. I like it how you went really formal with the uh, first line, too. I can tell you're all business about this, which I appreciate because I don't usually see that side of you. So I'm I'm really glad that you've shown up today here for oh, the podcast. I'm to be on my best your... <laughs> behavior for your podcast. Well, I'm really excited about this, too, because... Um, people in Instagram DMs or in comments or just like on the streets or in the Whole Foods are always like asking random questions. I think that if you're a family or a couple that show up in any sort of like, you know, public light, people want to know all the behind the scenes. Like, you know, what gets on your nerves about each other or what do you love the most about each other? Or how did you know you were the one? all of those questions. So what we did was we pulled Instagram and we compiled a list of like thousands and thousands of questions. A lot of them were the same and we put them together and that's what we're going to do today. Okay. So I'm excited to jump into these. Kyle is a bit of a wild card. So everybody buckle up because I don't know how these questions are going to be answered. <laughs> Let's roll. I've okay. not seen the questions. So question number one is... If you had to order coffee for the other person, do you know what their order is? If so, what is it? Easy. Okay. Well, let's just maybe talk about, just for one brief moment, about Kyle's caffeine intake on a day-to-day -day basis, because I feel like if there was an IV version of coffee or caffeine, Kyle would um, like to take it intravenously, or however you say that word. Uh, he drinks probably like six caffeinated drinks a day. Now, that's a little... Celsius. Now he's on the Gatorade kick. This I, is an Americano. I, I drink about 400 milligrams of caffeine a day. Before noon? No, I don't. I don't. I try to drink caffeine afternoon. Usually in the morning before I work out. And if I need a little pick-me-up around three, I'll have a little something. <laughs> I don't care. I'm... <laughs> <laughs> you just, it's so, he drinks so much caffeine. So I don't know, because there's honestly a bevy of options that I could choose from for this answer because um, but what's my he does coffee not order? discriminate. You know my coffee order. An Americana or just straight espresso. Straight espresso would be your number one coffee order. Yeah. It's the Italian in you. It is. Yours is uh, sugar-free vanilla latte. Light okay. on the pumps of vanilla. Job. He even knew this. You used to be in the oat milk and the almond milk, but now I think mm. you've kind of joined the, the healthier option of regular milk. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, well, let's. That's a big debate, so we're not going to open that can of worms. But Kyle is extremely pro dairy and milk, given if you don't have lactose intolerance. Um, don't even go down the thing of <sighs> lactose intolerance, please. <laughs> well, if you can drink unpasteurized <laughs> milk. If you have a lactose intolerance, that helps with that. Kyle is a doctor. Okay, so how did you know the other was the one? How did you know each other was the one? Like, was there a moment? Was it gradual? Um, and then it says, um, were you nervous uh, buying a ring or asking my dad to marry me? That's a great, 
Those are great. great okay. Questions. Those are good questions. So the first one, if there was a moment, I don't really think there was a moment, you know, like one single moment, you just, you're together for a period of time and you just kind of know, and you decide this is the person I want to spend the rest of my life with when we can do this. I just don't think there's one moment and no, I wasn't, um, I wasn't nervous asking Mal's dad. Uh, I've said this before. I was technically <laughs> legally on bail and <laughs> I, I don't think this can come back to haunt me. I think a little time has passed, but, um, and I couldn't officially cross state lines, but I did and ventured into Kentucky and Matt and asked Mal's dad, so I was out on bail for a few little incidents. He was out on bail for too many seatbelt violations and then missing a court date. Let's just clarify that. Um, and I know that to be a fact because whenever I went to b- to bail you out of jail at the bail bonds place, I had them pull his record in Tennessee, Florida, Mississippi. Like I did a few states around us and he had no incidents. So I was like, okay, fine. You didn't pull it in Mississippi. I'll bail it out. I'm pretty sure I did. No. <laughs> she didn't pull it in the state of Mississippi. <laughs> okay, so he um, was out on bail, and then my dad was leaving to climb Everest for the first time or something, climb some mountain. And so there was this a small window This is not something I'm proud of, of, by the way. This is just kind of the reality of what <laughs> was. So... Um, it could be a lot worse. I could have been bailing you out of jail for something majorly worse than seatbelt violations and a missed court date. So we may not be I've, here. I've broken enough. worse laws than that. <laughs> okay. So um, when did I know? Let's see. So, you know, Kyle and I's journey in our relationship together, we have experienced a lot of life and like gone through a lot of life in different like phases um, and diff- as different versions of ourselves. And when Kyle and I first got together, I, if you know my story, I, I was in active addiction. Like I was really not myself in a lot of ways. And we had a lot of like breaking up and getting back together and breaking up and getting back together. Like we would continue to be drawn back together though. But I will say for me, the moment or like the, the point in time where I knew that you were the one would be post all of that, like after I got back to Nashville post treatment and we got back together, I was, you know, the whole new version of myself, kind of back to the original version of myself, even I feel like. And it was just like two people like dating two totally different people and we still loved each other just as much. And I think that, that's a part of our journey that's really special that we saw each other at the very worst. Um, and then we saw each other at the very best. So we've had, you know, s- such a rich relationship because, you know, everybody wants to talk about the highs, but we, we, we experienced the major lows together. <laughs> we were wild. We were wild. <laughs> and um, I think that that's when I knew, I would say. Yeah. Okay. I'd kiss you if we weren't so far apart. <laughs> <laughs> you could do a high five or something. Um, okay. The best part of marriage or the best um, marriage advice? I'm hesitant to give marriage advice. I don't, you know, we're still, we're <laughs> still early in. in the stages. <laughs> I was telling um, her about the seven year itch. I was like, yeah, there's something called the seven year itch where like people start getting squirrely in their marriages. And he was like, do you have the itch? <laughs> I was like, no. I've never really heard of that. So that was news to me, but whatever to those that are out there itching. <laughs> Good luck. Um, I, you know, I don't know. I feel like when you get into marriage, you, and I don't know where I've heard this, but somebody said you, you make it a choice to love that person every day. It's just the choice you make because there's going to be ups and downs and the person's going to be mad or upset or happy. And it's just, I feel like a choice that I make every day and just go on. Like marriage and life isn't a Disney movie, you know, um, And we're lucky to have a great marriage and uh, I'm thankful for that. So just kind of wake up and. Making the choice every day. I think that that's really great. 
I would say um, a great piece of like when you're choosing the person that you want to marry advice is to really make sure that you're on the same page with values, like specifically like family, faith, just fundamental things, because I feel like a lot of people look past those things. And Kyle and I are very fundamentally the same. We had the same thoughts around family, the same thoughts around faith, the same thoughts about the types of lives that we wanted to live. And I think that, I mean, it's real easy to fall into a love affair with somebody and just be all, you know, all in and you have the butterflies and like you're young and you just really love that person. But I mean, 85% of that relationship is going to be what happens after marriage. And it is really made up of those foundational, hopefully similarities but a lot of time differences, and I think it rips people apart. So I think that that um, is good advice, and um, I think that you just can really get started on the right foot if you can be on the same page about some things. And if you're not on the same page about some things, I think that there are ways to come to a compromise or get closer, or at least you know know that the other person feels totally opposite of you on this big issue. So that would be my. Um, my, fa- my f- what's the best the best part of marriage is just experiencing life with someone that you really like yeah and always I, having someone to talk to like always having someone there in the morning and at night like you're experiencing the day to day and everything of life together but also like it's I don't know how to describe that but it's just one of my favorite parts of marriage yeah and I I love our children but I also love when Mal and I take trips, just us, <laughs> where we're not mom and dad, it's just her and I, and those, I just, I feel like I'm hanging, or I am hanging out with my friend. And I know that's mm-hmm. such a cliche, marry your best friend, everybody says that, but you you do want to genuinely enjoy hanging out with the person yes. that you marry. Yes. I think a lot of people forget about that um, because it, it that's very important. Yeah, because yeah. looks are going to fade. You're going to have stuff that come life stuff that just happens. Like mm-hmm. it just helps to be with the right person. Mm-hmm. Although I feel like your looks have gotten better in the last ten plus years. I, I've gotten better. Well, I, I grew both- a beard, and I thought I had a good looking face <laughs> until I shaved my beard. Like what happened between high school and now? <laughs> I'm like, oh God! And my child was crying when they saw me. <laughs> Mallory was looking at me like. Some man had walked in the house. Um, so a beard always helps. Uh, That's really funny. You were We called Kyle his stepdad for like a week because Ford wouldn't let Kyle hold him. He was so scared. Very traumatic moment. You do in the have house. a cute face underneath your beard, but I do Not prefer the beard. Not as cute as I thought it was. <laughs> Oh, gosh, that's funny. Okay, probably the most popular question. What is the decision on baby number four? I think we honestly go back and forth every day. We're at a different percentage. So who knows by the time this podcast airs, but, you know, it's just everything is so good now, but we also do really feel like there is like one maybe missing, but I don't know. I don't know. Do you have, what's your answer today? Well, if you would have asked me Monday when our middle child broke our second frame TV. I would tell you there's no chance we will have a fourth child. And a matter of fact, we may be giving one away. But I do think 15 years from now, when Mal and I are just kind of sitting around, we would always wonder about that fourth child. So that's kind of where I'm at on it. Yeah, But we'll see. You know, there's a lot of things that have that come into play. So, yeah. All right. So the Kyle segment, a lot of people really specifically wanted Kyle to speak to some of these questions and for me to just they did. That shut my great. trap. So here is the Kyle segment. All right. <laughs> okay. Kyle, this is from a follower. I need to know Kyle about Kyle's music taste and how did he get it? Oh, man. I've always enjoyed listening to music and I love Every single type of music except Christian music. And I know why what? I do not like it. Yes, you do. You've been blasting the 
that Spirit one. Okay, me that's me. one song I enjoy. Don't like anything else. Oh, you're really going it, controversial on this podcast. Well, and let me tell you why. When I um, when I parked cars, I owned a valet company, so I'd spend oh. seventy hours a week parking people's cars, and it was a tale as old as time. If somebody came to valet and they were playing Christian music in their car, they were the worst tipper. <laughs> Always didn't matter. <laughs> didn't matter what car, what race, <sighs> ethnicity. Sexual orientation didn't matter. If they had Christian music in the car, you were getting a one dollar tip really? every single time. So I think okay, that just well, left that's a better uh, reason because you really like Jesus and your faith is strong. So I, I was love just Jesus. Really wondering where the Christianity and the music. Was yeah, it's, go. it's just that's kind of um, just okay. rubbed me the wrong way. So, that's but a I'll, good I'll enjoy listening to all types of music. You you have been playing some Christian music though in the last six months. I will say I've been playing that one song. Okay. Kyle, if you had to compete in a beauty pageant, what would be your talent? <laughs> I love magic. I have <laughs> yes, a this. lot of magic tricks, uh -huh. and I feel like that would be an interesting talent. I can also juggle. I can do. I can spin the plate. Um, my dad always said, if I couldn't find a job, I can join the circus. <laughs> <laughs> Um, oh, but we yeah. should have had some juggling balls in here. That would have been good to show his juggling. I can skill. juggle more than balls. Okay. I can find some things in here to juggle. Maybe people can tune in on the YouTube video to watch me juggle. Okay. That's a good idea. <laughs> okay. Kyle, do you ever do Mallory's stretch and folds? I do not touch Mallory's sourdough. I have no interest in sourdough. I enjoy eating it. I love when our kids ask for it. I think it's special. I love when Mal cooks. Uh, I, I mean, it's great, but I know my limitations and no, okay. I do not help her with her sourdough, nor do I want to. Okay. He's anti-lactose intolerant people, Christian music, and sourdough so far on this <laughs> podcast. So you're really making some friends in this community. <laughs> Sorry if I've offended anyone. Okay. Kyle, will you be strict when Sunday starts dating? I, you know, I haven't thought of that, nor do I want to think of that. Little sunshine. Um, she's just my little girl, and I'm not that far down the road to okay. think about that. So, All right. Okay, who typically says I'm sorry first? Uh, well, I'm usually... A little more wrong than I am right, so probably me. <laughs> I would say Kyle, too. I'm fairly hard-headed in certain instances. If I know I'm wrong, I will say I'm sorry. But if I am... I, to say you're sorry, I feel like you have to truly mean it. I'm not one of those persons that's going to say I'm sorry over and over. Like if I, if I say it and I don't say it a lot, you know I mean it. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. That's the difference in a man and a woman, I feel like, because I feel like women just say, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry yeah. about everything. I say I'm sorry all the time. Um, and I, I haven't even think said that a, to you before. A like, great point. <laughs> baby, I love you, but I'm not sorry. <laughs> like, <laughs> So I, I think to really and truly say you're sorry, you really need to be sorry. And if you're not, don't say it. So a spinoff of this question would be, how do we resolve conflict? Um, and I don't feel like Kyle and I, I, I have so many friends that are like, oh, I haven't spoken to my husband in two days because like we're just, you know, we're, we're in a fight right now. And we don't do that. We don't, I, A, I don't want like to be around my children and like them to feel the tension for a long time. So I I feel like resolving conflict, while it may look different, it's going to depend on like what the conflict's about. I think so sooner rather than later, like we always resolve the conflict. And it's usually just about coming together. And the conversation always starts with, hey, I love you and I want to be on the same page because I don't want to fight with you. And it always starts like that. It always comes from a place of love. And we always resolve our conflicts. But it always comes from a place of love. I think when some people try and resolve conflicts, they want to come in and they just want to get that person on their side. And that is not how we resolve conflicts. Yeah. And I, 
you know, it coming from a place of love and actually just getting it out in the open. And we've gotten so much better talking through things when we disagree. And sometimes you just disagree with each other and that's fine. Yeah. But I, I think it comes from a place of love. Neither of us are going to walk on eggshells in our own homes. No, it's we just, do not. It's, and I think too, being a little older helps. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Kyle and I got married older and I think How that- How old were we when we got married? Th- I think 31, uh, which is not like older, older, but it's definitely older than a lot of the people that were around us. Um, and I think that that you're just- a lot of times you're just wiser because you've lived more life. Yeah. And I'm not concerned about being right. Like I want the situation right. Yeah. I want to be right with the person. Not right about the thing. Right. Mm -hmm. That, that, and that's, I say that and we say that, but that's hard to do. Yes. Because it takes just some, you know, you got to swallow some stuff. Yeah. And just be like, okay, okay, let's move on. Mm -hmm. Because- Mm -hmm. 98% 98% of the time, whatever you're fighting about, it doesn't matter. Yeah. And it in won't matter months, in five years. Yeah. It yeah. does not matter. So I think yeah. that kind of looking at that and really asking yourself, is this going to matter a week from now? No. Yeah. Okay. Whatever, buddy. Yeah. But what does matter is a happy home. And that is a something yeah. that we make a priority for us and for our children. But also for us, Kyle talks about all the time. He's like, I just feel like I have so much peace in my life. He's like, men want peace. Men don't. He's always like jokes around whenever he sees these women that are like posting on Instagram. They're like, you can't handle me. <laughs> so, and hey, like, oh, just right. wait. And Kyle's like, you're right. Like, I don't want, like, I, they don't want to handle you. Like, <laughs> they want peace yeah. in their life. <laughs> just speaking from that, like, you want to come home to peace. You have a hard day at work. Kids are being bad, whatever. You want a partner. And I think that's why you and I click so well. We want peace. Yes, peace. we want peace. Um, yeah. Because stuff has been turbulent and we've been through turbulent things. And I feel like as you get older, especially with young children who are as wild as ours and crazy mm-hmm. and like just some crazy shit in your life is going to happen. Just coming to a place of peace in your home is such a blessing. Yeah. And that's hard to do. And that takes work to do. And it takes time to do. It doesn't, oh, we're going to have peace, and then it's there. It doesn't happen like that. Um, I don't know where I was rambling with that. No, that was great. It takes intentionality to get to that point in time, but it's a really powerful place to live from because life is going to hand you a lot of unexpected things, and it's going to make your life turbulent. So like, if you've got turbulence from the outside and the inside, you're going to be on a rocky ship like for the rest of your life. Yeah, so you're burn I out. believe that valuing peace in a marriage – and in a home is something that Kyle and I do. And, you know, we look past a lot of things because we choose peace. And it's the total opposite of brushing things under the rug. It's just being like, this is my priority. Um, and we talk about that a lot. And I, I don't actually hear a lot of people talk about that. But you've brought that to my attention. And I love that about our marriage and Me our too. home. Um, okay. How do you find balance between marriage and parenting? You know. Man. I just feel like there are seasons where things are certain ways and then there are seasons where you can prioritize other things. And in a season of parenting young children, you are parenting young children the majority of the time and you are married to the other person that's parenting young children. (laughs) But I mean, it's not like you're going on a 10 day honeymoon cruise like every six months. It's just not the season for that. Yeah. When you have young kids, especially three, it's just... It's hard to find that time. So I feel like we find bits and pieces. Yes. And that kind of keeps us going, whether it's we like to have coffee on Thursday mornings, mm-hmm. you know, with each other just for an hour. That's fine. And then we go on. Mm-hmm. You hear all these things online. Make sure you get one date night a week. We tried that. We tried. It's just not it's just a reality. a lot of babysitter, like, And that's okay. Out. And not like adding pressure to, like, yeah. when I know we're both busy kids work whatever we're not gonna be we got to do our day because then it just adds yeah to it's almost like a task Mm -hmm. um so we're just in a season of watching these wild ass kids and (laughs) all mal's stuff's really just taking off so she's super busy which is awesome and it's just 
where we're at now. It's where our feet are. Yeah. And we also like even little getaways really help Kyle and I. And it's kind of hard sometimes to plan a getaway just for a getaway. So like whenever in my Sundays was on the billboard in Times Square and we were going to New York to do a podcast at Rockefeller Plaza, like different work things, we've made like a little mini getaway together. And those are so amazing. No, I have Kyle to have I. those. Yeah, I have to he have loves me and you getaway. <laughs> maybe once every six months, six months, just a few days. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. I, I need that mm-hmm. um, with my wife. So if yeah. I can have one of those every once in a while, I'm good for weeks on end. Mm-hmm. Okay. Favorite date y'all have ever gone on? I'd Gosh. say I just think of like our trips when we go to New York or, you know, I don't really have a favorite date. Our first date was really a funny date where we got Cheesecake Factory to go and we ate it in the park. It was the most bizarre date because it was just it like. Was sweet. It was sweet. But like, when have we ever done that again in the last 12 years? Well, I think it was more we were trying to fill each other out. Oh. Like, you know, who's this person? And we needed to be at the park instead of in the Cheesecake Factory. Well, the park is a little quieter than the Cheesecake Factory. <laughs> and Mallory did kiss me first. I did not. And that was the first night we kissed. And Mallory kissed me first. No, I didn't. She not. leaned into that. I do, just feel like. <laughs> and do not edit this out of this podcast. Honesty. <laughs> be honest. <laughs> It's like sometimes like one person will just like lean a little bit first. And That's then... called passion. And she kissed me first. <laughs> she was overcame with passion. <laughs> and it's not like you were seduced in the park eating your cheesecake. You just, it took over you and that's okay. And just embrace that. And that is your truth. Uh, that's my truth. <laughs> and here we are three kids later. Still eating cheesecake. Oh, now our children really love Cheesecake Factory. They love it. Which is full circle. Yeah. That's really funny. We did this one date at Husk in Nashville where it was like pouring snow. Oh, that was that. a really great date. Yeah. Um, okay. What is your favorite meal to cook or to cook for each other? Kyle, any meal that involves purely 100% meat is Kyle's favorite meal to cook. I'm just going to go ahead and answer that question for Kyle. <laughs> Did, yep. Was I wrong? No. Kyle's idea of dinner is like two steaks on a plate. I'm like, do you want a side? Nope. I'm a simple man, baby. His side is like a duck fat truffle butter to dip mm. his meats in. Mm. <laughs> now, I eat your sourdough. One of my favorite things that you, I love when Mal cooks. She does all these cool meals, but I've really been loving the sourdough just because our whole family eats it. Yeah. It, the kids eat it. I go pick at it. So that's kind of my favorite right yeah. now. One trait from both you and Kyle that you want your kids to have. I would say one thing I love about Mal, and and I feel like all of our kids have this so far, is her excitement and joy of holidays, daily life, just making things special. And And I love that about her. And I think our kids feel that around holidays. And that's just something I really really love and enjoy okay i would say for our boys kyle is this is two parts kyle is so different from so many men that i've ever met in that kyle ran a big business in nashville and then he stepped back from his business and his life in the business realm to raise our children in this season and to support his wife, whose career was taking off. And I think that that takes a very special type of man. And I think that that is an even stronger version of a man than a lot of men that I've seen in my life. And I I think that um, you will go back to doing something great like after this season. But I think it's so selfless and it's awesome. And it's, it's what's enabled us not to have someone else raising our children. And... It's enabled me to continue to grow my business while also like being a parent and knowing that they're with a parent the majority of the rest of the time. Um, I would love for the boys to have that because I think that's an awesome quality. Um, I appreciate that. And I, raising kids is very hard. Mm-hmm. It's very, and I think just as a guy's standpoint, we don't have 
that nurturing, innate nurturing strain that women have. We're a little shorter on patience. And so learning to do that has been harder, but I think I'd have a lot more trouble with it if I didn't have my business before this. Yeah. So knowing that I got out there, did X, Y, and Z, that that's helpful to me to be able to be like, okay, now I'm going to do this. And then baby, you go take this as far as you can take it. Know everything's good on the home front. Got it covered. And let's go. Yeah. But you truly do embrace this season. And I feel like a lot of times the stay at home, the more stay at home parent, which I'm also a stay at home parent because it's not like I am working traditional hours, but like a stay at home parent will resent the other parent because they don't get to be out in the workforce and they don't get to talk to adults all day, you know, and it's very rare that he will say anything to that nature he's always like you know thanks for doing this in this season and it's just like so sweet and so so such a strength of yours and i mean sometimes he loses it and he's like i'm a man i'm not built for this like women <laughs> i'm just like oh <laughs> some days are just long and anybody that's been with kids for 17 hour day it's just like my god <laughs> <laughs> what is happening? That's where it might help you to listen to Christian music, but you're anti. Oh, that's the last thing I want. I need <laughs> after watching kids all day. Um, because so, I talk to God a lot when I'm watching kids all day. <laughs> oh, that's funny. And then Sunday. Oh gosh, I don't know. Those. That's my wish for the boys. One. I. I hope that Sunday's really into bright, loud fashion, like. I am and like Kyle is too, because I think that that's just a really fun thing to be into. There's a lot of other deeper aspirations I had for her, but since we went deep with the first one, I'll just be a little light on the second one. (laughs) Okay. So let's just do some rapid fire questions. Okay. Okay. If you could have dinner with any famous person, who would it be? Dead or alive. Give me a dead and I'm alive. Uh, Jesus Christ would be the dead one, which I guess you can argue he is alive. (laughs) Uh, and I just think I have to go Elon Musk. Mm, that, yeah, that would be a very interesting dinner. It it would. Yeah, and I would have to, this is so boring and so typical, but I would love, Oprah would definitely be like one of my top uh, alive. Lately, I've been like really liking Sarah Blakely. Um And I feel like she would be a great one, too. Um, I would love to have her on the podcast. But, yeah. I And, like, a Martha Stewart or, like, an Anna Garden. I mean, I would just – I have a lot of dinners that I want to (laughs) have. And then dead. Oh, gosh. I mean, I would have to go with my grandpa because I just – any one more meal, like, with him would just be – What is Kyle's worst habit – or your favorite favorite habit of Kyle's. You want to answer that about me first? Uh, you know, there, there's a lot of things that you do that I love. Uh, I try not to get annoyed by too much. Man. Uh, and I also don't want to bite the hand that feeds me. <laughs> so I have to <laughs> walk a tight rope on this answer. Um, oh, okay. I've got one. Okay. Mallory. Is, is not the best at putting things away when she's done. Yes, I like I, there cans, are particular Stanley things. cups, a gallon of milk that she'll leave on the counter for six hours and then just throw it back in the fridge like nothing happened. Uh, it's, we so used that's to do that at our house in Kentucky, I feel like. We leave the milk out. You do. I know. Maybe that's why none of us are lactose intolerant because like we are able to withstand milk in all forms. Okay. What is a movie we could watch on repeat? I do watch movies on repeat. Hamilton. Yeah, we actually watch Hamilton together on repeat. And Kyle listens to the soundtrack of Hamilton in the Y, and then whenever he accidentally turns his phone on and thinks his Bluetooth is connected by his like strong friends that he's trying to show off in front of at the YMCA, it's like blasting, like, you will never be satisfied. Yeah, that's, Satisfied is probably my favorite <laughs> song, and I listen to it a lot. Um, oh, yeah. That's... Yeah, Kind of emasculating. Okay. (laughs) All right. Tell us a fun fact. My granddad 
was the last person to hand make shoes for Johnson and Murphy. And he made them by hand at Green Hills Mall a long time ago. And he made shoes for Arnold Palmer, Al Gore, Bill Clinton. I know kind of these names ring a different bell now, but back then, Tommy Lasorda. So it was really, I think that's really cool and and really special. And it's kind of a fun fact. Okay, a secret you kept from your parents in high school. I actually didn't keep any secrets from my parents in high school. I was a really good kid all the way through high school. Yeah, we were, I mean. I don't think you can say the same. We were good kids. We were just kind of rowdy. And that's okay, you know. A reality (sighs) show you'd love to be on. Will of Fortune. You used to say Price is Right, I thought. Price is Right or Will of Fortune. A game show. I would never... I don't think we'd ever do a reality like a reality reality show. No. Well, we've had we the do opportunity like a game to show. do a reality show, and we said no. That would be horrible. <laughs> Absolutely not at this season. Okay, Kyle, what is your go-to karaoke song? I have never in my life heard you sing a karaoke song. Play something country. What? I think that's a great karaoke song. <laughs> Can you do like the ah uh, hoo No, I thought the crowd sing that part. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. It's a great, like when that song comes on, if you're at a smoky karaoke bar, everybody get up out of their seat and start shaking. Everybody knows the words. It's got, got a kind of a good little catchy. Okay. So that's my answer. That really took me by surprise. <laughs> Can you sing a little bit of it for us? Nope. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> um, okay. And then last but not least... Are y'all more alike or different? We are very alike and aligned on very fundamental things in our life. But we're also very, very different outside of those, I feel like. I think we probably are more alike than you would think from the outside. Yeah. In fact, like we ta- we've taken personality tests over like the last... 10 or 12 years and like what was the most recent one that everybody was taking the Enneagram um, like back whenever the Myers-Briggs one that doesn't even have that many options but we always test the exact same which is very bizarre I remember talking to that Enneagram specialist and she was like for you guys to be married to each other at the exact same Enneagram and the exact same wing you can be like each other's best like you can be a power couple or you can be each other's like absolute worst nightmare. And I feel like that we've seen so many different versions of our relationship where that is true with the Enneagram because like we're so much alike in some things that it can bring out the best or the worst. Now it's the best. Um, we were like a, a three zing, zing four. Oh, zing. <laughs> we're a We're a three wing two, both of us. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, this has been really a treat to have you on the podcast. And it's really a treat to have you as my husband and to be able to live together in our house and raise our children together. So, been nice for me as well, (laughs) Mallory. So, we have a few extra questions just for this YouTube exclusive content that we're bringing you guys on this video today that you didn't hear on the podcast. So, um, question number one is. What article of clothing would you throw out from the other person's closet? Oh, I love all your clothes. You had a pair of these clog shoes that just didn't do it for me. The Birkenstock ones? The Birkenstock clogs. I've only worn those like once. Thank you. (laughs) Not a fan of those. Okay. Not a fan of those. Okay. Okay. All right. So I guess my answer would probably be um, Kyle, like, cuts off his shirts like high schoolers. Uh, like, he's got a Tzatziki's shirt that he, like, cuts the holes These of are the lounge arms. around shirts that I wear in the privacy of my home, <laughs> not in public. So the whole, the armpit hole goes, like, all the way down to his hip. And like the arms show. So I think it's like a muscle thing, you know, which you are very muscular and you do have a good physique. So I understand why you might want to show that off. But I just think that maybe just buy a tank. 
Uh, I don't like traditional tanks. <laughs> I, and I get it. It's a very high school-esque piece of apparel, but uh, they're going nowhere. Okay. <laughs> Except on my body. <laughs> okay. That's a great question. Um. Oh, do you guys organize the dishwasher in the same way? Here no, I do the dishes. <laughs> Mallory does not organize anything that <laughs> yeah. comes to dishes. I do or organize clothes. certain things like jewelry or like shoes, or I organize kids' toys. I, Kyle, that's you do a great a, job with the dishes because he doesn't like it whenever I do the dishes because apparently I do them wrong. So well, there's I feel a like certain this is a role reversal that a lot of women deal with with their husbands. <laughs> it, it is, but it's twenty twenty four now, and there's a certain way to load the dishwasher where all the dishes get clean. It's not overloaded. Stuff's not like stuck up and blocking the spinner thing. I've just seen some stuff when Mallory's loaded the dishwasher <laughs> that makes me question um, a few things. No one but, ever taught me to load a dishwasher. Have you? I know. Do you teach people to load the dishwasher? No, I think just sometimes. Yeah, yes. Yes. I don't think anybody ever taught me. I just, living Figure by myself, you just learn. Well, I used to do the dishes when I lived by myself, and they all got cleaned, so it wasn't that bad. What hairstyle will Kyle pe- be choosing this year? I feel like you're in oh, kind man. of in between with your hairstyles right now. I am. I'm, I'm growing it out long. I like it short in the summer, but I would love to get hair plugs <laughs> to have that just full head of hair. <laughs> if so if I can find a brand to, deal, if to anybody sponsor Kyle with the hair plug journey, he could really give. Hair plugs. I'll show the real deal. A really great go. Go. I don't really care about my hair that much. I'll grow it long in the winter, short in the summer. My favorite hairstyle is short. That takes less than 30 seconds to do. I'm not a huge hair guy. I either grow it long or do it short. I don't have a favorite mm-hmm. pr- hair product. Okay. So that's where I'm at on that. Okay. And what are you most looking forward to experiencing together slash learning about each other this year? Huh. Let's do the experiencing together. What are we most looking forward to experiencing together this year? Um, I'm excited for Mal's business and her company and just to see how that grows. It's been a crazy time from when, you know, you were filming and I was editing your makeup videos know, and doing yeah, vlogs and it was way. just like you and I and Mal... I has got just such a, a small, great team of women. Like it's just so cool to see where it's going, and I, I'm really excited about that. And then our kids, kind of growing up and stepping into their own their own thing. I'm really excited about that. Mm-hmm. I'd love to squeak out one more vacation, just you and me. Mm-hmm. So that'd be nice. We will. That's what I'm looking forward to. Mm, that's good. I love experiencing, I love trips as a family, like with young kids, because you're just like seeing the world through their eyes for the first time, I feel like. I love holidays with young kids. I love uh, being able to have our family such an ingrained part in my business, like the Living Fully co-shoots and stuff. It's like my sister and it's Kyle and it's the boys. And um, even in my Sundays, I had Jade in the last shoot and I had Kaylee, who's our sister-in-law, and the one before. That's just really fun to experience as a family. And it's such a joy being able to be able to have a business that is successful, but also like be able to have a family that's successful that you feel really involved in. And having your family involved in your business. I just feel like it's the it's the absolute best. So I'm really excited to experience all that together. And that was a sweet answer. 